Nightcrest, Corporate Kingdom Story, narrated by Max Archer. Nightcrest High, the best prep school in Avron, has everything you could ask for. Superb education, strong community of entrepreneurs and future business leaders, and beautiful girls dressed in matching clad skirts. Hey Archer, Andrew called out, how's your dad? Nightcrest High also has a few things that no one asks for, like self-absorbed twits with more money than they deserve. Your king is doing quite well, I replied. Andrew seemed vexed by the comment. Well, tell him that I've been waiting for the next season of Point Tropic. I don't know why it's taken your company so long to release it. It's not like Matthew's been working on anything else to improve this city. You might as well have something to watch until your father's reign ends. I swallowed my annoyance and gave a fake smile. How was your stepmom? Sorry, I should be more specific. How was your seventh stepmom? She's doing just fine, Andrew said with an equally fake smile. Probably making more money than your mother. I was honestly more surprised than angry that he had the stones to make a joke about my deceased mom. I'm sure she's doing quite well for herself, I said. So tell me, if you graduate, are you planning on taking over your father's construction company? Or your mother's prostitution business? Andrew started marching towards me with a closed fist, but Mr. Teller stepped in before he could do anything. Everything all right over here? The teacher asked. Andrew stopped with very little space between us. You're just having a friendly chat? He said, his eyes barreling into mine. There will be time for chatting later, Mr. Tiller said. Right now, I believe you should be getting back to class. Andrew gave me a look that suggested sinister intent before turning to leave. I was about to make my way to my next class when Mr. Tiller stopped me. Max, can I have a word? I turned to my English professor. I'm sure your father is putting plenty of pressure on you to do well both in school and at Archer Studios. How are you managing? I'm doing fine, sir, I said respectfully. Mr. Teller looked at me with concern. I know that it's been hard for you without your mother, and I'm sure your father has been struggling as well. But just know that there are resources here at the school if you ever need anything. Thanks, but I think I've got it all under control. I could tell that my answer was not satisfying to Mr. Teller. Very well, he said. Do stay out of trouble, will you? I'll do my best. As long as I don't have to interact with Andrew anymore today. Mr. Teller nodded. Well, I apologize if I've made you late for your next class. You can tell your professor that I am to blame. Will do, I agreed. I turned to leave, but Mr. Teller had one last word to give. And truthfully, I believe your father is doing an excellent job as king. I turned slightly to give him a nod, but I couldn't help but wonder if he was simply saying that out of mandatory respect. I wasn't sure what was worse, Andrew blatantly disrespecting my father, or Mr. Teller kissing up to him. After classes were out, I walked across the pristine campus towards my car to find Jason waiting for me with his sister Rebecca and his girlfriend Amber. Hey mate, Jason said. You ready? Ready for what? I asked. Aren't we going to the night's row? Jason questioned. I can't tonight. I've got mounds of homework and I honestly just don't really feel like it. Everything alright? Amber asked. Yeah, it's fine. Andrew just put me in a mood. Don't listen to a word that idiot says, Jason encouraged. He's just mad because his father will never be a knight. How did he even get into this school anyways? Rebecca asked. His father probably paid for him to get in, I suggested. Maybe that's why his province is crumbling. Either way, you shouldn't let him get to you, Jason said. Just come hang out with us for a little bit. And then you'll have the rest of the night to finish your schoolwork. I also have a training session with Chad, I replied. If I miss another one, my father will have my head. Rough, Jason replied. 
Well, just know that we're your friends, which means that you have to hang out with us at some point. Oh, keep that in mind, I said with a small laugh. Good, Jason said. We'll catch you next time. In the meantime, don't let Chad kill you. No promises. Jason let out a chuckle as we said our goodbyes. I went over to my car and got in. As I looked out of my windshield, I saw Andrew and his followers leaving the campus. I took in a deep breath and let it out and started the ignition. Keep your feet square, but don't sacrifice your mobility. Chad was pointing out all of my flaws in combat as usual. Be strong on your toes. I nodded and flipped the wooden stick around in my hand. Chad lunged at me and went to thrust his fake sword into my stomach. I deflected it and stepped back, trying to stay on my toes. Good. Now when I attack, find a moment to switch into an offensive stance. I parried his strikes left and right, then found my opportunity to step forward. Once I was able to start throwing attacks at him, I could see the battle turning in my favor. Chad knocked my weapon away, but as I went to swing again, he leaned back and swung his stick into my side. I winced and stumbled away. Chad didn't seem to mind my pain. You're getting better. But remember that your opponent won't always be so predictable. You need to stay sharp and watch my movements. Staying two steps ahead isn't enough. You need to foresee all the potential counters. How am I supposed to do that? I asked, trying to breathe through the pain. I'm not psychic. And even if I were, it'd be illegal to use my powers anyways. You've been watching the news, Chad said in response to my comment on psychic magic. Nah, I said. My father just talks about it a lot. The enforcers have been cracking down on magic users, and my father was trying to fund their efforts, but the taxpayers were questioning how necessary it was. It was smart of my father to put extra efforts into media coverage to show just how powerful magicians could be. Don't worry yourself about all that, Chad said. The enforcers have it under control. Now, as I said, watch my movements. Very rarely will you be fighting someone skilled enough to attack without tails. If you stay focused and watch my footwork, and the way I position my body, there are only a few potential moves I could make. My father walked into the training room. How's everything going in here? He asked. Easy learning, Chad said. Good. I don't want to see my son lose a duel before he even has children to carry on the legacy. Dad, I exclaimed. Oh, come on, son. It's just tradition. A tradition that I hope doesn't come any time soon. And plus, the only way I'm gonna have to duel someone is if you're... I stopped myself from saying it. Don't worry about me, my father said confidently. I'm simply looking out for your future. I nodded and turned to Chad. Are we done here, or did you want to beat me a bit more? Well, I suppose we can call it a day. You are improving, though. Don't sell yourself short. Improving and actually being decent are two entirely different things. Time and practice is all it takes to become great. Isn't that right, Matthew? My father nodded. That's right. I was just like you at your age. I could hardly stay on my feet in combat. But after a few years of training, I became confident in my sword. Knowing that a duel could be right around the corner is terrifying, unless you're confident in your abilities. I'm training you in this art so that you may never feel fear when you rise to power someday. Don't you mean if? As I said, I'm confident in my sword, but I can't use a sword to defend against natural death. I won't be around forever, and I'll need someone who can carry on the Archer legacy. Why do you always have to talk like that? I asked, getting more uncomfortable. Because I want you to know and understand what the future inevitably holds. Only then will you understand your purpose. But why do you always have to bring your death into the conversation? Death is just a part of life. But as I said, I don't intend on dying anytime soon. Just know that someday, I will die, and I will expect you to be ready to take the throne. 
couldn't listen to him any longer. I grabbed my things and left the training room. I knew he was right, but I hated how easy it was for him to talk about death as if my mother hadn't just died. Not only was she my mother, but she was his wife. It had been a couple years, but I still expected him to tread more carefully around the subject of death. And I couldn't bear to think of losing my father as well. I got out my phone and dialed Jason's number. Hey mate, he said on the other end. How's training going? I finished, but now I'm ready to go out. Now? Isn't it a little late? I'm not talking about the night's room. Didn't we say we would check out that club downtown? There was a brief silence on the other end. I remember joking about that, Jason said. Come on, it'll be fun. And I need a break from all things night related. Especially a lounge designed specifically for prep school kids. So what you're saying is you want to go on a little adventure? Yes. And I believe the Valor Club can grant us that adventure. Jason sighed. Fine. But if my parents call me out on it, I'm blaming you. You're of age, I reminded him. It doesn't mean they want me going to a nightclub downtown. I rolled my eyes even though I knew he couldn't see it. Are you coming or not? I already agreed to come, Jason said. I'll meet you there. Good, I said, hanging up immediately. I went to leave the Archer Studios building and expected my father to stop me, but he hadn't even come to check on me since I left the training room. Even though it made it easy for me to leave, I almost wanted him to come stop me. It would show that he actually cared. <laughs>